One of the first videos on my channel is of a sunrise simulator alarm clock build. And the way that this worked is I built an external device that would plug into my alarm clock. And when the alarm initially went off, it would start fading on an LED strip over the course of nine minutes. Now it was nine minutes because the LED strip would fade on between presses of the snooze button on that alarm clock. So the idea was to simulate a sunrise and it would make it a little bit easier to get out of bed because the lights are already on and it's kind of more of a gentle transition into being awake, or at least that's the idea. Now one of the problems with that device is that the alarm would have to go off once in order to set the chain reaction of the LED strip coming on. And the other problem with it is that you had to manually arm this device every day. So I decided that I would like to make a more modern version of this device, and I figured that I had a few components laying around that would do uh, pretty well in order to do this. So as for my parts, I used a D1 Mini dev board, which is an ESP8266 based microcontroller on it. And the nice thing about the ESP8266 microcontrollers is they allow connections to a Wi-Fi network. Now, having a connection for a Wi-Fi network is useful in two ways for this. One is that we can actually pull an NTP or network time protocol server in order to get the current time. And we can also create a user interface to be able to set when we want the device to start the uh, LED turn on sequence. I also had some tunable white LED strip laying around. And if you're unfamiliar, tunable white LED strip is effectively uh, a dual color white LED strip. So it has LEDs for warm white and cold white on it. And you can blend in however much warm white and cold white you want in order to tune the color temperature that you have. And that's useful for this because we can start out with a really warm white in the early stages of our sunrise simulation and we can fade it into more of a daylight white color as the sunrise progresses. So let's go ahead and start by looking at our software. You will firstly have to set up your Arduino IDE to be able to program an ESP microcontroller, and I'll insert a link in the description and a card above to show you how to do that, because I do have a, uh, another video explaining that process. And I would also like to mention that a lot of my code here is from randomnerdtutorials.com. It's a really good resource if you need uh, ESP related coding tutorials. And I took a couple of pieces of their code in order to Frankenstein my code together here. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at it. There are a few main components here. It hosts a web server that allows the user to input the time they want the lights to be on at. Uh, this time is set in 24 hour time. And the last setting on this page will allow the user to set if they want the lights to come on every day, only on weekdays, or if they want the system to be disabled. And this interface can be accessed by inputting the IP address of the ESP8266 into a web browser. The sunrise simulation will start 10 minutes before the set time and the LEDs will be fully turned on at the set time. The settings on this web page are stored into the flash memory of the microcontroller, and they will not be lost in the event of a power outage, which is pretty convenient. The next part of this program will pull an NTP server to get the current time, and it does so every 25 seconds. Uh, 25 seconds was chosen to make sure that we never miss the time taking over uh, a one minute increment. And because we are pulling time from an NTP server, we don't need any kind of a real-time clock. We don't need a backup battery, anything like that. Of course, the downside to that is that we do need a network connection to get the time. The lights can be turned off by pressing a push button on the outside of the box. And also, if the sunrise simulation is not actively taking place, if you manually press the button on the outside of the box, the warm white LEDs will fade on really quickly in about the course of a second just to make it less jarring. If you're laying in bed at night and want light, you have a nice soft fade on if you press the button. And of course, if you press the button again, the lights will fade back off. And when it's doing this, it's only fading on and off the warm white LEDs because I prefer the look of warm white over cold white. 
especially late at night. So now we'll go ahead and take a look at the schematic. There's really not a lot to it. Everything is powered by a 24 volt DC supply since that's what the LED strip runs at. Uh, the incoming supply is regulated down to 3.3 volts and I'm just using one of those uh, uh, cheap DC to DC converter modules to do that. You could probably use something like an LM7805 or I guess an LM7803. Does that exist? That's probably a thing. I'm sure there's a 3.3 version of that regulator. But if you do use a linear regulator, the chances of you getting it quite hot are fairly high because there is a pretty big voltage gap between the input supply voltage and the output voltage. There are two MOSFETs connected individually to the warm white and cold white parts of the LED strip. And of course there's one push button for controlling the device. I built this circuit up on a breadboard for testing. I was planning to power it with a 24 volt AC power supply that I found laying around in my closet, but I accidentally shorted the output on the supply for an extended period of time and burned up the transformer. So I ended up buying a proper 24 volt DC switching power supply. After some testing, I built up the circuit on a piece of perf board and designed a case around it. I 3D printed the case and assembled everything into its final form. Unfortunately, the dimensions on the case and specifically the tolerance between the top and bottom case pieces were a little bit too tight. And when I pressed the two pieces together, I ended up cracking the bottom piece of the case. But I just turned the crack to the backside and we'll pretend that it doesn't exist. And after using this thing for the last month or so, I've been pretty happy with its performance. Software has been running well and it's been triggering reliably at the correct time every day. There are a couple of things that could use some improvement though. Uh, firstly, the user interface of entering a set time is a bit clunky. This doesn't bother me too much though because I'm not changing the time that I wake up very often. I've only set it once in the entire time that I've had it. So it's not something I've had to deal with a whole lot. Uh, but another issue that will be more important and annoying in the future is the fact that this device won't deal with daylight savings time at all, which at least where I live is kind of an issue because we jump our time forward and backwards by an hour uh, twice a year. So when that happens, I'm going to have to go in and manually change the time, either the set time, offset my set time for an hour, or I'll have to change the code to change its set time by an hour. Now there probably is a way to get around this and just have it automatically adjust for the time zones. And I might have to look into doing that, but that is something to add to this device in the future. But all in all, I think this is a good upgrade over my previous version of this project. And if you liked it, consider giving the video a like. If you have any comments, thoughts, questions, concerns, feel free to leave those in the comments below. I will leave a link to a GitHub page or something where you can go download the code and the files, the schematic, all that fun stuff. But uh, anyway, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.